Good morning from Phnom Penh, which is Cambodia's capital city. We are going to be spending today going to the Killing Fields and the Twelslang Genocide Museum. This is going to be an opportunity to educate ourselves about a very tragic but also surprisingly recent set of events in Cambodia's history. This may be a little bit difficult for us to get through as well as for you, so we just wanted to give you a heads up. We also don't know much about this, so we're hoping that we can present this horrific history in a respectful manner. But before we do go to the Killing Fields and Twelfth Lang Genocide Museum, we are going to go and have some breakfast at our hotel. To start our day, we are at the Tool Slang Genocide Museum, which is the site of the S21 prison. Entry to get in is $5 per person and an additional $5 for an audio guide, so between the pair of us, it's $15 US. On April 17, 1975, dictator Pol Pot's communist Khmer Rouge regime marched into Phnom Penh and emptied the city of its inhabitants. Urbanites, otherwise labeled as new people, were pitted against the peasant class or old people from the country. City dwellers were blamed for the nation's problems and sent to rural collective farms where they were subjected to forced labor. Many starved to death or died of disease due to the harsh conditions under which they were held. Between 1975 and 1979, the Ankar government instituted cruel policies with the goal of creating a self-sustaining agrarian state. Twal Slang was a secondary school that then was converted during the Khmer Rouge regime into a prison known as Security Prison 21. S21 was used to imprison and torture political, religious, ethnic and intellectual prisoners. The prisoners were stripped of their clothing and humanity, identified by number only, detained in tiny cells, often shackled to many other prisoners, starved of food and drink, and beaten and waterboarded in order to obtain false confessions. Once the prisoners were deemed to serve their purpose or were too gravely ill due to excessive torture, they were transported to a rural site, now known as a killing field, where they were brutally executed. Unlike the other two buildings we've been in, this one has been completely untouched, leaving every structure in the place as it was. And on the second floor, this is where the mass detentions occurred. And so in each of these former classrooms, you had 60 people all shackled together in this not all that big room. And the craziest thing is, this is one of I think we counted five different rooms just on this one level alone. So you're talking 300 people shackled together, confined into incredibly cramped conditions. I can't even imagine what that must have been like. just arrived to Chung Ek, which is one of the many killing fields scattered across this country. It costs six US dollars per person to get in, but that does include an audio guide. Chung Ek is the most famous of a collection of over 300 killing fields across the country. It was at sites like these that prisoners were brutally murdered by being beaten by various tools and finally having their throat slit because bullets were too expensive for a quick death. To honor the victims of the horrific state-sponsored Cambodian genocide, 
a large memorial Buddha stupa containing an estimated 9,000 recovered skulls was built. Between 1 and 2.5 million people lost their lives during this tragic time, which amounted to about 25% of the population. from Tulslang and Chungak for a while now and we've kind of held off on giving our final thoughts on what we learned today because we wanted to properly reflect and compile them so we could present them fully and properly because that's what the victims of this genocide deserve. And going into this, we didn't really know much about the Cambodian genocide. We'd heard of it, but that was probably about it. And that says a lot about the education systems in Canada, where I was schooled, and England, where you went to school. My immediate thought when I was presented with all this information today was how similar it was to the Holocaust. And when we remarked on that, then we realized that unfortunately, ever since the time of imperial powers, trying to systematically eradicate indigenous peoples during colonialization, even to oppressive regimes and other genocides that have even happened in the 20th century, and other instances of ethnic cleansing, then we've realized that actually none of this is anything new, which is a pretty horrific realization. And I think the important thing here is that obviously genocide is a horrific and terrible thing, but by only learning about the ones that may have happened close to home, then you're only really getting a very small experience and you're only learning a very narrow view on it all. And so therefore it's really worth educating yourself on where such things have happened around the world and not just maybe in the more prominent countries where it's been heard of happening. Mm -hmm. Other than the Holocaust, and of course the Cambodian genocide. Other ones that spring to mind for me were ones in Armenia and Rwanda, which I know just as little about, and now feel the need to learn more about. And I hope that in making this video, we have inspired just one person to go and learn more about any of the horrific genocides that have occurred throughout history. And it is definitely important to us as well because it has been so said by a couple of famous people that those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. And obviously no one should ever have to suffer such things ever again. I think another thing as far as we go is it made us also realize just how lucky that we have been during our lifetimes to have never been subject to such a regime or such a horrific systematic event going on and so with that then it definitely kind of helps us realize how lucky we are and how privileged we are to be able to look at it from an outside perspective And with that, then, our hearts go out to the victims of that and 
any other such situation that may be happening around the world. We're going to call this video here, so we will pick this up tomorrow. But until next time, take care. And try to keep smiling.